Welcome to Enter the Unknown. My name is FJ and we're back today with the second episode of our Random Car Challenge. If you haven't seen the first episode, then you'll probably want to check that out just to know what the series is all about. It'll be linked in the description. What you're watching right now is the group of cards being added to our deck for Rival Battle number 3. We're throwing in all of the Pokemon from Route 3, Route 4 and Mount Moon, plus a few evolutions. We have to draw 4 Pokemon for the Cerulean battle with Gary, so let's get to it. Gary's team of 4 is made up of a level 15 Rattata, a level 16 Abra, a level 17 Pidgeotto, and at level 18 his starter, Bulbasaur. And on our side we'll have Geodude at level 15. At level 16 we're going to have Paris. Our level 17 will be Squirtle, another Squirtle use. And finally, our level 18 will be Clefairy. Okay, that's a good team. It's a well-rounded team. I think we'll be okay. Here's what our team looks like for the battle. It took quite a while to find Clefairy in Mount Moon, but we got him eventually and the rest were easy. Now, we're ready to take on Gary. We lead off with Geodude against his Pidgeotto, and our defense is simply too much for him to overcome. A couple of quick attacks only manage to chip away 6 HP from Geodude, while two rock throws obliterate the flying type. For her trouble, she learns the move Magnitude, which will be nice if we ever get to use her again. When Bulbasaur comes in next, we switch out to the Fairy. With one sing, we put Gary Starter to sleep, and go to finish him off with a Mega Kick. Unfortunately, Clefairy can't hit the sleeping Bulbasaur. That's an entirely stationary target. Sort yourself out, Clefairy. Its second time lucky here is Mega Kick connects on the next turn, but isn't enough to one-shot the Siege Pokemon. Somehow, he sleeps through getting his face punted, and we're able to slap the sleeping sapling into unconsciousness. Gary sends out his Abra next, and as it's literally incapable of dealing damage, we go out to Paris. With a couple of bullet seeds and a scratch, we're able to knock out Abra before he can teleport away. That takes Gary down to 1, leaving him just his level 15 Rattata. We bring Squirtle in to make use of our whole team, and after getting in a free Tail Whip, Rattata's Quick Attack actually does a decent amount of damage. One Water Gun takes the Purple Rat below half health, and when he can't land a Crit Quick Attack, he falls to a second hit. Our third run at our rival is another easy one, but he's going to start evolving more Pokemon soon, which is sure to make things tough. We have a bunch of cards to add before the Battle of Misty, because our level 21 Starmie enables several evolutions, while we can also add all of the Pokemon from Route 24. Some of you ask why I have so many copies of the same cards in the last comment section, and the truth is, when I was in school it was all about who had the most cards. Nobody cared what cards were in your stack, we were like 5 or 6, and none of us played the game. Weirdly, it was the exact opposite when Yu-Gi-Oh cards became the craze. I traded until I only had like 7 blue eyes and 5 red eyes, and no other cards. It probably won't shock you to learn that I never actually played Yu-Gi-Oh either. Anyway, back to Pokemon. We only need to draw two Pokemon for our battle with Misty, and it looks like we'll be using Bellsprout and... Nidoran Female. Okay, this one could be tough. This'll be close. Okay, so this is going to seem like it was deliberate because it's gonna help me, but I got Nidoran and Bellsprout's levels backwards. Unfortunately, Bellsprout was level 20 when I realized, and I hadn't saved since I started grinding, so... Yeah, my bad. In my defense, I did tell you I was going to mess this up a lot. It's not a good defense, but that is my defense. Okay, let's get into the battle. Misty leads off with her level 18 Staryu, and we start off with Nidoran. Staryu knows Tackle, Harden, Recover, and Water Pulse, so it can definitely be frustrating. Combining recovery moves with confusion and defense raising is just straight up rude. Misty decided to use Harden three times to start this battle, while I slowly whittled down her star use health. One Water Pulse then took away nearly half of Nidoran's HP. To add insult to injury, after Double Kick takes Staryu into the red, Misty uses a Super Potion to undo all of our good work. We get one more Double Kick before a high roll Water Pulse finishes off Nidoran. Bellsprout has it all to do. Staryu outspeeds him and hits a Water Pulse to chip away around a quarter of our health, but one Vine Whip knocks it out, taking it down to a 1-on-1. One -on -one. Misty's level 21 Starmie comes out, and I don't know about you guys, but this prickly bastard gave me more trouble than Whitney's Miltank ever did. 
With a base stat total of 520, there's just no way you can have anything close to it at this point in the game. Anyway, I'm not complaining, I like the challenge, honestly. This channel would be pretty dumb if I didn't. So, after one water pulse takes us down into potential one-shot range, we put Starmie to sleep with Sleep Powder. Unfortunately, Vine Whip doesn't quite take it below half health, so this will take a few hits. The second shot connects and Starmie still doesn't wake up, so Bellsprout is able to finish it off with one last Vine Whip. This ended up being a pretty lucky run, and Misty did beat me a few times before this attempt. That's two badges down. As you can see, this is already getting tougher. The further we go and the more fully evolved Pokemon we meet, the harder this is going to get. That's going to do it for episode two. I got some really good feedback on the first episode, so I'm obviously going to keep this series going. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.